We've all been there. You've moved into a new house with great plans for the garden, but sometimes life gets in the way and you just never get round to it. Today I'm going to show you how you can reinvigorate your garden, whatever the size, with a few simple home hacks. Only 13% of us use our gardens every day. This valuable asset is one we're just not making the most of. I'm in Gillingham in Kent to meet Louise and Gareth. Since moving in three years ago, the couple haven't been able to tackle the garden due to Louise's cancer diagnosis. Having been given the all clear, thoughts have returned to the garden and I'm here to help. Just a few clear ideas is actually all that it takes. So you bought the house with a nice garden and that was a key reason for choosing the house. Then yeah. fell ill. I mean, the house looks lovely inside, but I, I sense there's some issues out of the back. Because Louise was ill and couldn't really leave the house, I wanted this bit to be nicest. We've got yeah. a limited budget, so it's a case of doing the garden or doing a room that Louise is going to be in. I did the bit that she was going to be in. It would be brilliant if the garden was done, because when I'm ill, Tyler could just play out there instead of having to drag myself out of bed when I'm really not feeling up to it. I would say it's not about how much you've got to spend it, it's what you choose to spend it on. And there's a lot that we can do ourselves, but come on, let's, you better show me. OK. Cheers. Where do you see the specific problem? For me, the main one is this concrete base here. It's just so ugly. An area we can entertain would be lovely. But it, it is something that we can use and work off. It's doable. That'd be brilliant. Yeah, it would be brilliant. He says confidently. Like yes. <laughs> At nearly six by nine metres, it's a good size garden, but the uneven slope means it'll just take a bit of planning. <laughs> Snug set of overalls, but I've got quite a job outside. Fortunately, I've got some help. Hannah Schloss is a garden designer expert, and she's going to flesh out some of my ideas. Well, they're desperate to have a place to entertain in, and obviously it's tricky to have a table and a slope, so we're going to extend a decking area out here and then put in a pizza oven as well, so not only can they eat outside, they can cook outside as well. We've got quite a meadow situation yes. going on here. I'm going to have to give this a good strim before we can even begin to mow because the grass is so long. <laughs> I've only been doing it a short while, but it's very satisfying strimming. It's starting to make a big difference already. Keeping a lawn in good health should be number one priority. If it's grown long, remember these simple tips. Firstly, always strim first before you mow and take a third off the length of grass. Invest in a good lawn mower that allows you to adjust grass length. Autumn is a good time for lawn maintenance as this is when the turf repairs itself and leave the lawn standing at about four centimetres for the winter months. Decking is a simple, low-maintenance way to create a versatile seating area in the garden. They want something that's going to be easy to look after. Yes, so I think decking's a great one. It's important that you keep giving it a good sweep. Just keep removing those leaves and moss to stop any damp issues. Yeah. Um, other than that, twice a year, give it a good clean um, before, in the spring before the summer and then mm -hmm. once again before winter but otherwise it's a really low maintenance option. It's all coming together very quickly. And what's great about the deck at this end of the garden is that it frees up the rest of it for Tyler to play. So adults can sit, entertain, have a glass of wine or whatever, children can play. So there's good definition of space. Entertaining isn't the garden's only use. I have to use the back gate a lot. This path's very precarious at best. So the next problem is its accessibility. They use it a lot. Don't feel it's safe. It's certainly not looking at its finest. What can we do? Absolutely. We need to define that. Um, so we're going to clear out the weeds and the grass from, from beneath, between yep. the pathway to stop that overgrowing. And then we're going to put some deck boards down the side to really make a crisp division from the lawn and the borders in the path. When creating a border in the garden, mark out the area first before chipping off the turf and levelling the ground. Potted plants are a really easy way to add colour and variety into the garden and are easily maintained. Have you taken a plant out of a pot no. before? No. Okay. <laughs> this is a nice one to show you. You want to get your hand over the top to stop all the insides like falling out, like this. And then sometimes with these, the roots start yeah. growing through the pot. Yeah. So you want to give it a bit of a squeeze and sometimes even like a bang as well. There we go. Yeah. 
And you might even want to start teasing these roots out as well. Just encourage them to start growing outwards yeah. rather than yeah. continuing. Can I put a bit of compost oh, in there? Thank you. Yeah, you can help me with this. Don't forget to place down a membrane to prevent weed growth before covering it in shingle for a smart look. Then channel your inner artist by arranging the plants to your heart's content. Finally, Gareth and Louise want a part of the garden Tyler can call his own. Quite a lot after school, Tyler's friends come round, but because out here is uninhabitable, they, they go up to his bedroom house. and, and so <laughs> yeah, run around. Yeah, It'd be mess. nice if they had an area to run around in. By demarcating an area with sleeper logs and some wood shavings, we're able to give Tyler his very own space he can play in. What was once an unloved and overgrown space has now been transformed into a family-friendly garden, and it's time for Louise and Gareth to have a look. We've cut the grass back to allow it to repair itself, and by next summer, there should be a lush green lawn. This is really, really good. It looks brilliant compared to what it was. The patio has been decked to create a cooking and dining area. I love really to be able is. to eat out here in summer. There is now an obvious and easy access to the back gate, and a boxed play pit means Louise can relax in the knowledge that Tyler has his own play area. I love you. Hey, Ty. <coughs> What's up? Hi. Hope you enjoy your garden and spend lots of time outside as a family. Best wishes, Phil and the team. Louise and Gareth absolutely love their garden and I'm sure it's going to get a huge amount of use. In my mind, the garden has the same value as a room does in the house, so treat it accordingly. The three things that we've learned, absolutely vital to plan and define your space. Where do you want to sit and entertain and where do you want kids to play? Uneven ground doesn't have to be a massive problem. You can solve it. And thirdly, there are lots of people out there to help, so don't be afraid to ask. And most importantly, enjoy it. It's yours, that's what it's there for.